Awesome. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I won't touch anything. Hi, everyone. I'm Charlotte Smith with The Profitable Farm. And today I am super excited to introduce you to this amazing, inspirational woman, Melissa Miller. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Tell everyone hi. hi. How are you all? <laughs> um, Melissa is the education director for the National Farmers Union. And I first met her when she heard me speak at a conference. And then she invited me to speak at the National Farmers Union con conference in San Diego. I got to know you a little bit more and what a powerhouse you are. And then I've been following your farm plans online and um, saw a couple things that I just had to share with everyone in the group. And also Melissa is the owner of Lady Bell Farms. And the third thing I wanna say about Melissa before she does her own little intro is she, she is an ultra athlete. So like I try to run three miles at a time without passing out and Hayden tries to go to the gym a couple times a week. And then Melissa goes and runs 50 miles at a time <laughs> competing. So what a huge inspiration. So next trying to get in my three miles, I'm gonna think of channeling my inner Melissa that runs 50. So you're just an incredible inspiration to all of us because you're working and you're farming and you're an ultra athlete too. So anyway, welcome Melissa. Can you give us a little intro of who you are Give us your farm name online so people can go look at your beautiful website too. Sure, and thank you for being way too kind, Charlotte. <laughs> um, like Charlotte mentioned, I, I met Charlotte and actually uh, listened to one of her lectures in Portland, Oregon at a women's conference and I just fell in love with her, her marketing. Um, since then, we've gotten to know each other. Uh, so I'm Melissa Miller. I work in Washington, D.C. I'm the education director at National Farmers Union. We're the second uh, oldest uh, general farm organization in the country. Um, my farm is out in Maryland. It's Lady Bell Farms. Uh, I am a direct market CSA flower and herb farm. I am on a larger property that is 400 acres, uh, which the rest is farmed I'm on about two acres. Um, the rest of the 400 acres is farmed by two other women, uh, Sarah Campbell and Chelsea Cruz. Uh, and they farm um, chicken, pasture, all pastured chicken, pork, uh, beef, and they also have sheep this year. Um, so, and part of my rent is that I help market and help out with the animals in exchange for two acres on the larger farm. Awesome. And what is your website name? And my website name, it, it's www.ladybellfarms.com. Okay, awesome. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so one of the first things that when I started following you online, I saw this description that just resonated with me completely and it's your Joey Bouquet program. And as soon as I read that, well, first of all, I let, it brought tears to my eyes. So I would love if you would share the story of that. Um, and I'm gonna stop right there because I think it's a wonderful story. So Melissa has this Joey Bouquet program. Tell us how, why, where the idea came from, how you got there and, and a little bit of the backstory on that because it's such a beautiful story and program. Absolutely. Um, so I farmed for about six years uh, for other people on urban farms and different farms uh, all over the country. And then I got an office job, which I love, um, but I've been here for two years. So when I had the chance to get my own property and start my own farm business, I knew I wanted it to be really community oriented. Um, and a way I did that is I have a pay it forward model in my flower CSA uh, and they're called Joey Bouquets. So what it is, every third bouquet you buy, or for CSA customers, it's once once a month, you're able to pay forward a bouquet to somebody in the community that maybe just moved to the community, maybe somebody sick in their family, maybe a teacher at your children's school that you really appreciate and want to tell them. Um, it's kind of a way for community members just to tell each other that they care about one another uh, and a way for us to run our business responsibly um, and get to meet the community and kind of do a really great thing uh, for our neighbors. Uh, the idea came from my brother, Joseph. So about six years ago, I lost my brother uh, to type one diabetes. 
Um, he was 29 years old, and six weeks later, I lost my father as well, just a freak coincidence. Uh, he passed away from heart disease. But during that really rough time, um, little gestures really helped our, my, myself and my mother get through. So if someone bought us a soda or, you know, called us just to let us know they were thinking about us, it really helped us kind of just go day to day and, and really feel like we were loved by our community. So I really wanted to bring that model into my business as a way to get to know the community, but also to show them that um, we care about them as well and, and kind of want to bring smiles throughout. That is so amazing. I love that um, because it, uh, for so many reasons, but one of the things you just touched on is I feel like I'm getting to an age now where a lot of my friends are getting sick. Um, people have passed away that I didn't expect and I never know what to do. And by you just saying that even somebody buying you a soda made a difference, you know, what a great idea. So um, how, has the what has the response been like from people on the Joey book case? It's been more than I could ask for. Um, people that don't live in our state or, or even around us have, you know, friends and family and people who've heard about the idea have, have asked me, well, how can we buy Joey bouquets or pay it forward to people in your area, even if we don't know anybody? Um, so we now have that program going where we've partnered we partnered with local hospitals. Um, and so if folks want to donate a bouquet and they don't know anybody in our area, we deliver to the local hospital to families who've been kind of uh, directed our way from the staff at the hospital that might need an extra smile or maybe have a child in, in the hospital. We've also partnered with our local schools um, and they do flat uh, vases, uh, sustainable vases from recycled materials for the Joey bouquets. So the students write little messages and cards to the people that we're giving these uh, bouquets to, to give an extra smile. So we've also been able to get a huge response from parents and teachers, just, you know, thank you for letting our children kind of, and showing them, you know, how to care about their community. And it's been really cool. Yeah, you know, um, I've got my book coming out in a couple weeks and I got I have a whole chapter in there on giving and building connection. And you have taken that to an even higher level and you're connecting um, the, the students in schools, the grade school students. What a great lesson for them and, and people from across the country in the hospital. I mean, that's got to feel really amazing. And I know that a lot of our farmers they start realizing um, why it is their customers buy from them. They realize connection is the bigger part of what we do. Like, you know, we think, oh, I'm going to start a flower CSA, but you have no idea the connections that now you're building like across the country, it sounds like. Yeah, and those connections are really important. And they're really important when you're trying to get customers to believe in your business. And it really differentiates you from somebody else you may be competing with or another farm in the area. Um, because you're with, you know, those people in your community all the time and they see your face. Um, and it's it's made a huge difference. Yeah, um, I can imagine, because I talk a lot about this saturated market. You know, you can have flowers from anywhere delivered to anybody just by clicking a couple buttons on the internet. So why are they going to seek out your particular flower farm? And so how can you differentiate yourself? And this is huge. I just think it's wonderful. And when I before, when I first thought about doing this video, I thought I want to challenge all the people who listen to this video to figure out how can you incorporate this idea into your farm for instance, me, it could be as easy as a dozen eggs or a pound of ground beef or something like that. Um, you know, buy 10 pounds and then the 10th one. So, something like that is, is a don't, not buy 10 pounds, get a pound free, but buy 10 pounds and then give a pound, pay it forward somehow. So I would just love everyone to kind of think how they could incorporate this in their business and, you know, leave us comments down below of how you're doing it. because. What a great idea if we had all these farmers all across the U.S. doing things like this. <laughs> um, you know, I even was thinking that I could see somebody buying this from you, like buying the whole Joey Bouquet idea, for, you know, some bigger 
Yeah, patent. Yeah, maybe you should think about <laughs> patenting that because I haven't heard of anyone doing that, and someone, you know, might snatch that up. <laughs> well, um, you know, okay, the. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, and I'm sure a lot of producers feel this way. It just comes natural when you really love growing for a community, just trying to think about different ways to kind of give back as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people love, along with the community, they love being a part of a business that's, you know, helping others, you know, the social awareness too. Exactly. All right. So I'd like to switch now to what I think is a brilliant move on your part too of the CrossFit box and how you sell there. Could you could you talk a little bit about what you how you set that up because a a lot again everyone in this group has a different model for selling and um, their products and I love your idea. Could you talk about how you do that? What you do? How you started it? Who you talked to? What things you said to to get that set up? Sure. So, um, I'll, myself included, I have a full time job, and Sarah Campbell, who I farm with as well, has a full time job. So, marketing is always a bit of a time crunch, as I'm sure everybody watching understands. Um, so, we needed something that was accessible, made financial sense, um, and you know, we don't have time to go to the markets on weekends because that's our time to to work on the farm. Because Monday through Friday, we're at, we're in the office. Um, um, as Charlotte said, I'm a I'm a fitness junkie. So when I'm not cross when I'm not running 50 miles, I'm also at CrossFit all the time, which is a wonderful community. If if folks aren't aware, CrossFit communities are really really close knit um, family type situations. So I kind of talked to the owner of my CrossFit box because I'm there five days a week, and I said, Hey, you know what would differentiate you between another CrossFit box is um, if you had like a meat CSA in your CrossFit box, that would attract more customers for you. So he agreed for free to put a freezer in our CrossFit uh, box. And so folks can order meat from Sarah um, and I'll drop it off at the CrossFit box and they could pick it up out of the freezer. Uh, we're also going to be doing that with vegetables and flowers as well. It's kind of our own little farmer's market, um, but to no cost. And it helps out the CrossFit box as well because it, it kind of puts Tommy on a different level, our owner on a different level than other CrossFit boxes. Um, if you don't know about CrossFitters, they love paleo, they love being healthy. <laughs> um, it's kind of a community of 200 people I was already in, so it really made sense. And I'm not wasting my time um, at a market, I'm not wasting product at a market, um, and I'm already going there um, anyway, so I'm not wasting any gas as well. That's really on a practical standpoint. How do they pay for the products? Do, do they have to arrange with the owner or what do they do when they want to make a purchase? So I have a farm market on my store. Um, right now there's only the CSA products, but we'll eventually be putting all the meat products, all our veggie products. Um, so they can order through individual products off my website, um, and then I will then deliver it to the box. Um, it has a form on it to make sure if they're a member of the CrossFit box, then um, not just anybody can go on there and order, you know, for delivery. Um, so it, it kind of makes it accessible for everybody. Okay, so they're prepaying for they're pre-paying. All, everything they pick up. Yep. Okay, that's great. Good. Wow, how cool. Um this is really huge because so many farmers just like you work off the farm. And if they don't work off the farm, it is really hard to leave the farm. And like you said, you have a community of 200 people built in already at that CrossFit box, but you did say something key. And that is that you work out there five days a week. So (laughs) um, uh, what would you, you know, so is that really important or do you think someone who's a farmer who doesn't have time to do CrossFit uh, could approach their local CrossFit box, even though they've never worked out there? You know, how, how receptive do you think they'd be to something like that? You know, I, and I speak, you know, um, and I speak we run a beginning um, farmer institute we and we always farmer kind of institute. tell them we through the farmers union and, and we tell them um, we constantly tell them. that, Finding groups in the community is very important, whether it's a church group or groups at school or whether it's CrossFit. um, It's already a group of people who 
are together a couple times a week. A lot of times if one person starts buying from a farmer, it's kind of widespread. Um, that's kind of what happened with CrossFit. One of um, my CrossFit- Sorry, I actually missed part of that. It cut out. I don't know. I'm, is it cutting out on your end, Tayden? Oh, okay, okay. So we're just gonna keep going, Melissa. Um, okay. Hopefully on the replay, that will that will sound better. Sometimes when I do the interviews live, they don't sound good live, but they sound better later. And I, I missed what you said. <clears throat> but could you could you repeat the little part? All I heard was you tell you, working with the Beginning Farmers Institute at the NFU. You tell them to do what? To get involved in groups in the community. So for me, that was my CrossFit group. But some people, it might be their church group or their school group or it's already large groups of people that are constantly together throughout the week. Um, and as long as you introduce yourself, like if, even if I wasn't part of the CrossFit box, um, you get one person to start buying from you. It kind of spreads because it's a tight knit group. It's um, we had one person who really liked our meat in the CrossFit box and she started telling everybody in the CrossFit box about it. Um, so, and, and another thing about CrossFit, uh, it just makes sense. They're very health oriented. CrossFit fees are kind of a lot. So, you know, it's people with a disposable income of some sort um, and they're together all the time. So they kind of if one person starts buying, like I said, it, it kind of spreads. Perfect. OK, I heard that loud and clear. That was great. Um, and, you know, we have a, two different CrossFit gym owners uh, that shop at our farm store and then they tell their um, people, their closest buddies who work out there. So. So we have two different groups that pick up at our farm store for several people too. So yeah, it's been, it's really worked well for us. And and like you said, you and I are so aligned on so many things. And again, in the book, I talk about find a group like you did. Um, <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> excuse me, I've even found women's book clubs, you know, that are so excited to have, they talk about this, a book every week or every month when they get together. And they're so excited to have a different perspective like a farmer come in and tell them what they do so you can get involved in anything any sort of group that gets together if you're producing farm products that they, they have universal appeal and so you know it doesn't have to be crossfit it can be anything i've done things at the library and stuff like that so it's so it's just i mean i see it uh when you do it, when you put the effort into building connections into your community, it pays off by finding a group of people who support your prices and your business. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. All right. So, um, um, okay. So what, you're, so you used to be an English teacher too. Yes. And then <laughs> you, um, got into farming because of all your experience with your brother and all that. So did you continue? Do you con is that where your school connections come from as well as your teaching teacher friends or something in the past or just the schools you worked at? Um, yeah, so I used to be a high school English teacher and then I went back to grad school for sustainable ag uh, just because I wanted to do something a little bit more meaningful after my brother and my dad passed away. Um, but I knew from my experience with teaching high school um, that teachers are itching, uh, especially physical education teachers, environmental science teachers, are itching to be part of local agriculture, um, just to show their students the food system. So I knew it made sense. Um, and I'm in a different community now. I used to live in New Jersey. Now I'm in Virginia. Um, I live in Virginia. But I knew it made sense to partner with the schools uh, because I knew teachers would be excited about having a farmer kind of be part of their classroom experience. Yeah, how fun. Uh, I mean, that again, more great inspiration from Melissa. We can all learn from that. <laughs> um, all right, so we're approaching like 20 minutes on this video. You know how I would love for you to wrap it up is can you talk a little bit, this is totally off the cuff. I didn't ask about this earlier, but about the Beginning Farmers Institute, what you, how do you work with them? Because they're coming to you for farming advice as, and, and I know, you know, you take them on you, all, all that stuff, but how, what do you work with them on as far as marketing? What do you tell the Beginning Farmers, which it's, it was 17 when I met them in San Diego, San Diego, so it's a small group of people. What are you telling these people to do to market their products? And I understand some are direct to consumer, like us and some are um, 
you know, a larger industrial egg, but the direct to consumer ones, how do you coach them? I'd love to hear. Yeah, and it's funny, and it's it's why I, when I saw you speak, uh, you were like really hitting the nail on the head with everything you were talking about in Portland with marketing. Um, when it comes to don't give discounts, you know, don't train, don't train people to wait for coupons. Uh, we used to have a farmer in the middle of the country who was grew this beautiful grass-fed beef and was charging commodity prices just because he didn't know what he could sell it for. Um, so really, know what you're worth. And, and don't feel like you need to discount or coupon because people will pay, you know, for a good quality product if you market it correctly. Um, and, the, and then the second thing mainly we tell them is if you're direct marketing, whether you're a commodity producer or because uh, a lot of commodity producers now do value added just to diversify um, or if you are um, a CSA farmer is to really get integrated in the community. You know, we have a lot of farmers who are really successful. They're not the best farmers, but they're really good people. Uh, people persons, you know, they're they join church groups and they're part of the community school systems or sports or whatever it is. Um, and that's really how they sell product is if people don't worry about price when you have a connection with them, when they trust you already. Um, and so th those are the main things. And I know, Charlotte, you preach all of that. <laughs> and that's why we love you here so much at National Farmers Union. So, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. And and yeah, we're, we're so aligned on that. And and it's funny because you could write you could totally write the book I just wrote. And <laughs> it's coming out because everything you just said is is all in there that when you build trust with people and you don't you don't try to hawk your wares, but instead of hawking your wares, you focus on building trust with people then they want to buy with you. Not only do they want to buy with you, but price is no object when they trust you that much. And then they will be back year after year or season after season. You know, there's a lot of turnover for some of these farmers they complain about. But when you have these trusting relationships, and like you said, you don't have to be the top notch farmer. You know, it, it, um, if people forgive you when they trust you, they forgive you for the aphids on the flowers this week or something <laughs> like that. You know, I just it's so amazing how when you find this supportive group of people, your farm will become sustainable and profitable and the world will be a better place. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, I just want to thank you. Did I cover ask my daughter? OK, yeah, I think I covered everything. <laughs> Melissa, is there anything else you want to say here? Uh, before we wrap it up and I'm going to send the video out to our whole email list. So, you know, thousands of people are going to get this in an email um, probably tomorrow. Any other messages, encouragement, inspiration you want to share? The only other thing is I'll say is we all get discouraged, especially when it comes to marketing. And the number one thing you could do is um, make relationships with other farmers, make relationships with people like Charlotte who have kind of been through the ups and downs, but please keep going. We need producers. We need all of you to keep growing. <laughs> um, and we've all been there. So keep up the good work, everybody, really. Thank you. Thank you. What a great, and you know, in this Profitable Farm Facebook group, it is uh, so common that someone jumps in because they're having a bad day. And I love seeing everyone else gather around them and support them and say, hey, I was there last week or last month or the last year. I felt like quitting. Don't give up yet. You know, sometimes there's a time to give up. But <laughs> yeah, that's great advice of build these connections because they are all around us if we put the work in. So absolutely. All right. Well, Melissa, thank you so much thank for you, being Charlotte. here. <laughs> of course. All right, take care. I'm going to try to end the broadcast here. If I can, right, just click in. Okay, bye, everyone. Okay, can you still hear me, Melissa? Yes, ma'am. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Hang on. There's